Welcome to another Tech Insight video where we show you how to make your workspace work. In this episode, we're going to show you how to quickly allow users access to their physical work PC when they aren't able to make it to the office by using remote PC access. From the user perspective, they use any device, whether it be a smartphone, laptop, desktop, tablet, using any operating system and connect to the organization site. Once they authenticate, which can include numerous multi-factor authentication options, they initiate a connection to their work PC. This experience allows the user to access any application, website, or content as if they were physically located within the office. Let's now take a look at the conceptual architecture of how Remote PC functions. The main goal of Remote PC is to link a user to their physical work PC. But in order to do this, we have to cross the firewall through the DMZ and pass the internal firewall to get to those PCs that are located within the internal network. Users access a secured link via Citrix Gateway and authenticate to the environment. Storefront provides users with a list of resources authorized by the delivery controller. When the user launches a session to their assigned PC, Gateway creates a secured connection between the work PC and the external user. This solution provides strong authentication, helping to prevent unauthorized users from accessing work PCs. In addition, the session is secured with policies to prevent users from transferring items to the work PC and away from the work PC. This includes blocking connections to the endpoints drives, printers, clipboard, and more. And finally, users are assigned to the correct PC, whether that PC is assigned to a single user or assigned to multiple users. This approach to remote PC uses a fully on-premises model. However, we can allow organizations to use workspace and the gateway cloud services. In this scenario, users access Workspace. Workspace is able to communicate with the on-premises environment via an outbound connection created by the cloud connector. When the user launches a session to their assigned PC, gateway service creates a secured connection between the work PC and the external user. In addition to the capabilities provided with an on-prem scenario, the gateway service scenario can be used without requiring any changes to an on-premises configuration, which is especially important for organizations with a current Citrix virtual apps and desktop environment. By using the gateway service, there is no network device to manage in the DMZ, there is no public IP address to manage, and the gateway service is a global deployment spread across multiple point of presences, also known as POPs. Users will access the closest gateway service POP providing them with the best experience possible, regardless of the user's location. We can take this scenario one step further and utilize the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop service. This service also uses the Cloud Connector to authorize access to on-prem PCs. In addition to the benefits the Gateway service provides, incorporating the Virtual Apps and Desktop service means we have less infrastructure to maintain within our on-prem environment. Plus, because Citrix manages the Cloud services, Organizations don't have to worry about database servers, license servers, controllers, fault tolerance, or sizing. This is all done as part of the cloud service. These three deployment scenarios provides options for every organization based on current infrastructure deployment posture, technical expertise, and long-term priorities. Now that we understand the conceptual architecture, let's see how we implement it. The most difficult aspect of the admin side of the configuration is deploying the virtual delivery agent to all of the physical Windows PCs. Within the installation media for Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops, there are deployment scripts that can be used with Active Directory and other enterprise software deployment tools to automatically deploy the virtual delivery agent. We simply need to modify the script to point to the deployment share for the install media to point to a directory that can, that can host log files based on the success and failures of the installations, and then to set the appropriate command line options for the silent automated install. The command line parameters need to include the components we need to install, which would be the VDA, the fully qualified domain name of our delivery controllers for the environment, as well as the remote PC option to specify that we are going to be doing the remote PC access capability. With the script modified, we can now use a group policy object to deploy the virtual delivery agents to all of our remote PCs. 
So we're going to go ahead into the Group Policy Management MMC tool and create a new Group Policy object. Within this Group Policy object, we only have to define a single policy within the computer configuration. This policy specifies a startup script that will link to the script we just modified that will be used to install the virtual delivery agent. With the GPO created, we now need to link this GPO to an organizational unit that includes our work PCs. The next part of the admin process is to connect to our Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops server so that we can use Studio to create a new remote PC access based machine catalog. This catalog we're going to link directly to the OU that includes the work PCs that we want to allow users to access remotely. With the machine catalog created, we now need to create a delivery group that's associated with the catalog we just created. This delivery group is going to allow us to specify which users or user groups are allowed access to these remote PCs. We also define how the desktops are going to be assigned to the users. We can specify how many desktops can a user have. In this instance, we want to have a one-to-one -one relationship between user and desktop. Once we have the VDA, machine catalog, and delivery groups configured, a user will automatically get assigned to the correct instance. The next time the user is in the office and logs on locally to their PC, the locally installed VDA will use that user ID to create a permanent assignment to that PC identity. This eliminates the need for the admin to manually set each assignment individually, which could be a massive undertaking if we're dealing with thousands of PCs. Now, although this is an optional step in the remote PC access process, it is a recommended one in that we create a policy that limits what users can do and transfer to and from their work PC from their endpoint device. We're not sure what a user might have installed on the endpoint device. We're not sure how much we can trust that endpoint device. So the safest course of action is to prevent users from copying files to and from from using the clipboard of copying text and graphics to and from, or from allowing printing from your work PC to your endpoint device. So we create this policy, we associate it with the delivery group we just created, and then we go ahead and enable this to help protect our corporate environment. Setting up remote PC access is extremely simple and fast and a great way to allow users to remain productive when they are unable to physically make it to the office while maintaining the user experience.